go ahead and get started. Um, the problems we're going to do, we're going to do a bunch of examples today. And so the problems we're going to do, the directions would say show or prove whether the series converges or diverges, and then that's it. Um, And so I'm going to put a problem on the screen, and then we're going to kind of look at a summary of what we've done so far. So if I if I put this problem up, so the sum k equals, say, 2 to infinity of, we'll say, k to the third plus 8k over uh, 3k to the fourth minus 7. So if we have that series, I want to just kind of do an overview of how we want to approach a series in general. And so this handout is kind of, it's a good way to think about it. It's not a real formal uh, handout, but it's a good way to think about how to approach series. So uh, what this is saying at the top is, okay, we have the sum, normally k equals zero, but as far as determining whether it converges or diverges, it does not matter where you start. Um, so you have the sum from somewhere to infinity of AK. And AK is the original series that you're talking about on this handout. Um, and then in case you're wondering, this is on uh, the shared drive on unit three is where you can find this handout, my bad. Um, so, okay. so. In general, kind of the first thing or one of the first things we should look at or one thing that applies in every, it can apply in every case is the K-term test or the test for divergence. And it says if the limit of the uh, sequence is not zero, then the series diverges. So that's something we'd want to think about uh, to make sure that doesn't apply. If it does apply, we're kind of done with the problem. We can just say, okay, the limit of the sequence isn't zero. And so then the series diverges and we're done. Um, that's uh, not the case on the one we just wrote down. If it, um, I don't have it on the screen right now, but if you wrote it down, it's uh, k to the third plus 8k over 3k to the fourth minus seven. So that does go to zero, which means this doesn't apply. And then kind of the next thing is, okay, well, we've got basic series. And so this is kind of what we were talking about yesterday that every series or almost every series that we're going to do will break down into either a geometric series because it'll be an exponential where you have a number to the k or a P series, because it'll be a power function where you have uh, K to a power. Um, we write it as one over K to a power because if K actually ends up in the bottom, that's when uh, the sequence can go to zero. So those are the only ones that could converge. But uh, these are basically all power functions. These are basically all exponential functions. And so the one we have is more complicated than that. Um, and so the next thing is kind of what we were working on yesterday. And that's what I want to work more on today is series with all positive terms. So again, the original series is AK. And so assuming it fits the mold of the normal problems, which for the most part they're going to right now, uh, when I say that, I mean you have a fraction where it's all power functions over all power functions, or if you have all exponential functions over exponential functions, then we kind of go to this uh, situation, assuming it's all positive. So the first thing you would do is you'd get the easier series, which we'll call the comparison series, and we'll call that BK in terms of what this is doing. And so we'll figure out what that does. Okay, and so um, this is, I'm trying to make this as clear as possible on this handout, um, but let's read through exactly what it's saying. So it says, if the comparison series converges, so that's when graphically we think that it's leveling off, um, then we say, okay, well then if the original is less than the comparison, then we use the direct comparison. Otherwise, if the original is not less the, than the comparison, then we use in this case, the limit comparison. So if it looks like to you, this one means this side, that's not true. So you look over here and this tells you, okay, well, if the original, if, if the original, uh, I'm sorry, if the comparison series converges, and the original is less than the comparison series, then use the direct comparison. Otherwise, we go over here and use limit comparison. If the comparison series diverges, that's where graphically we think, okay, well, it's going up forever uh, and it goes to infinity. If the original is bigger than the comparison, then we can use direct comparison, which is over here. 
Otherwise, we use the limit comparison, which is over here. And so that's the general approach. And then further on the sand outer, if we have some negative terms and then ratio root test, we'll get to all that later. Uh, but right now we've got this. And so what happens is if it's the standard problems, the comparison series is one of these. So we kind of go back to this, we do this, we either do the geometric or p-series, and then we come back and use one of the two comparison tests to prove they do the same thing. But the conclusion on both is that the sum AK and the sum BK do the same thing in both cases. And when we say that, we mean they either both converge or they both diverge. And so the conclusion is going to be the same. So with that in mind, if you'd like to be referring to this uh, as we do the problems, which might be a good idea, uh, that's in Google Drive and it's under the shared drive and it's in the unit three folder and it's not in a subfolder. So if you just go into unit three sequences series, it's the only standalone file in there. It's called series test summary. Um, just because I can't give you a paper handout. So it would be a good idea to have that up kind of as we're going through, but let's go through the problem that we're talking about with that in mind. So I'm going to actually refer to that handout or at least that thought process as we go. So, okay. So when you look at this, First thing really we should think about is will the K term test work? And it will not because this sequence, if you ignore the sigma notation, this sequence K to the third over three K to the fourth, that sequence does go to zero. So we do not apply the K term test. If it did not go to zero, then we would say, okay, because of the K term test, the sequence doesn't go to zero. So the series diverges, not the case here. So then we go to the next thing. Well, it's not a basic series. It's not geometric or P series. But it is a series with all positive terms, or at least for large k, it's a series with all positive terms, because the biggest term on top is k to the third, the biggest term on bottom is 3k to the fourth. So we're going to get an easier series called the comparison series. So we're going to compare this to the sum k to the third over 3k to the fourth. And on these standard problems, we're going to take the biggest thing on top and the biggest thing on bottom, not necessarily the first thing on top and bottom, but the biggest thing. And so we simplify that. We factor out the one third and cancel the Ks. And so we get one third times the sum one over K. And so we get the easier series, which we call the comparison series. And we figure out what this does. We say, okay, well, this diverges. Because it's a constant multiple of the harmonic series, or you can say of a P series where P is one. Okay, and so we do that first. So we're coming over here first, if you're looking at this later, and now we're gonna do some more work on the original series. Questions to there. So uh, yesterday we were kind of going through pretty quickly to make sure we got everything covered. Now we wanna really make sure we do understand every aspect of this. A any questions at all so far? We're good. All right. So then now what we want to think, and so what I'm writing in blue is what we write as actually part of this answer. What I'm writing in red, you, you don't necessarily need to write, but you, I think it helps to think this through. So if it diverges and it's all positive, that means it goes to infinity. Whoops, we don't want that to be straight. So we're going to do like that and say, okay, well, then it, you know, it increases and it increases to infinity. And so then if we're going to use the direct comparison, would we prefer the original to be bigger than this? Or would we rather the original be smaller than this? If we're going to be able to make a conclusion using the direct comparison, what do you guys think? Bigger. We want it to be bigger because if it's bigger, then we know it goes to infinity because it's higher up than this. If it's smaller, it could go to infinity still, or it could level off. So we would like the original to be bigger. The original in this case is bigger because the numerator is bigger because the plus 8k, so it's k to the third versus k to the third, but this has a higher numerator. Then the denominator is the same except that it's minus seven, so then this has a smaller denominator, which also means a bigger fraction. Does that make sense to everybody? It's just real easy to get that backwards, so you have to be a little bit careful there. Okay, so we're going to prove that it is bigger. That means we can use the direct comparison. So we're going to say, okay, k to the third plus 8k, over 3k to the fourth minus seven is bigger than k to the third over 3k to the fourth minus seven. We know that's true because the numerator, uh, the denominator is the same. The numerator here is k to the third plus 8k. 
this is just k to the third. So to go from here to here, the numerator got smaller, which means the fraction in turn got smaller. Denominator stayed the same. So now, okay, if we then say, okay, that's bigger than k to the third over 3k to the fourth, we know that's true because this denominator is smaller than this one and the numerators are the same and everything's positive. And so we do know that this is bigger than this. For this picture to be accurate, so what we're saying is we know that it diverges because it goes to infinity. For this picture to be accurate, everything has to be positive. So we're going to then say, okay, the smaller one is bigger than zero, which means the bigger one is bigger than zero. So they're now both positive, or we knew that already, but we want to say that explicitly as part of our proof. And so now because of this, the original series diverges. And we call this by direct comparison. We say, okay, this diverges, diverges is the answer, but all of the stuff I'm writing is part of the proof. questions on that so like on some of the homework like before you even started the really long inequality yeah. you had to like write that ak was bigger than zero and bk was bigger than zero like when do you have to do that yeah so you nick you have to say that they're positive for both comparison tests but for this one you're doing that in this compound inequality like here ak is bigger than zero and dk is bigger than zero. The ones you're looking at where I'm writing it as two separate things is on the limit comparison test because I'm never writing this in a quality comparing the two series directly. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, okay. other questions? But it's still true here. You see what I'm saying? I'm just saying it in a different way. I could come out and say it separately here if I wanted to, but it's easier just to do it this way. All right, other questions to hear? Okay, so let's go through another one. Um, and we're going to do this one fairly quickly. So we're going to say, okay, uh, k equals three to infinity of the square root of k plus six over um, three k squared minus k. All right, so we go through quickly and say, okay, well, the K term test is not gonna work because we've got square root of K over three K squared. That sequence does go to zero. Everything is positive here and it's all the same function types. So we're gonna compare to the sum square root of K over three K squared. We're gonna simplify that by factoring out the one third and then square root of k is k to the one half. So I can rewrite this as one over k to the three halves. Questions to there? All right, we're gonna say then that converges because it's a constant multiple of a p-series. where P is three halves, which is bigger than one. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, now we think graphically, since everything is positive and it converges, it still increases, but it increases and levels off. So then, if we want to use the direct comparison like we did here, would we rather the original be larger than the easier one? Or would we rather the original be easier or smaller? Smaller. We want it to be smaller because if it's smaller, it cannot go to infinity. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. We want the original to be smaller. It's not because the top is bigger and the bottom is smaller. So this does not have the relationship that we want. 
So we go to the limit comparison test. Is everybody clear why here we go to limit comparison, but this one we were able to use direct comparison? Any questions on how to make that decision? Okay, so we're gonna go through that rationale one more time. There's a question in the chat and the person who answered is right. So the question is, how do you know when it's a constant multiple? So that's like the, the P series or the harmonic series is if it's just like one over K or one over K to the P. If you have a number in front like that, kind of like you're factoring out of a integral, that's called a constant multiple of that. And so that's what you guys are saying in the chat and that is right. Does that make sense to the person who asked? Is that clear? Okay, and then a couple of people will tell me privately doesn't make sense on this rationale as to why we're going to use the limit comparison. So let's go through that explanation again. Um, so, okay, so it, what we're going to do in both cases is we're going to get this easier series, okay? And we're going to figure out what it does. So here the easier series diverged, here the easier series converged. In the first case, when the easier series diverges, if the original is bigger, then we know it must diverge. So we want the original to be bigger. And when we say that we want it to be that, we mean that's what's necessary to use direct comparison test, okay? For the direct comparison test, which we'll abbreviate right now, DCT. Okay, we want it to be bigger. The reason we don't want it to be smaller is because if it were smaller, then it could be down here and it could go to infinity still, or it could level off and we don't know. So it could converge or diverge. So if we can prove it's bigger in this case, then we know that it diverges, which is what we're able to do here. On this problem, if it's bigger, it could go to infinity or it could level off just at a higher place. So being bigger here doesn't help. You cannot use the direct comparison test. If it's smaller, then okay, we know because it's positive, the only way for it to diverge is to go to infinity. But if it's smaller than the red one that converges, it can't possibly go to infinity, it has to level off. It can't bounce, it cannot bounce because we don't have any negative terms. It also cannot go to negative infinity because it doesn't have any negative terms. So for the direct comparison, we want, since this converges, we want the original to be smaller. For the direct comparison test. Does that make sense to everybody? Does that make sense? There were a couple of you guys saying didn't make sense in chat. Does that make sense now? At least a little bit better. All right, if it doesn't, let's stick around after and we'll talk more about it. But because the original here is not smaller, the top is bigger and the bottom is smaller, this is bigger than this. That means it's like the purple one, it could go to infinity or it could level off based on the direct comparison. So we cannot use the direct comparison. That's when we use the limit comparison. So then, okay, to use the limit comparison, this is the one that Nick was asking about a minute ago that says, okay, here you say a k and b k are positive. So we say, okay, k plus six, square root of k plus six over three squared, three k squared minus k is greater than zero. And the square root of k over three k squared is greater than zero. Okay. Uh, the top is bigger because the square root of k versus the square root of k plus six. The only difference is you're adding six. So that if you add six to whatever it is, then this is bigger than that on the top. And the bottom is smaller because the only difference is you're subtracting K. Does that make sense to people in chat asking that? We good? Okay, cool. And same deal back up here. Like we knew this was bigger because the top was bigger because the plus eight K bottom was smaller because of the minus seven. All right. Any other questions to hear? I know this stuff's confusing. So it's okay if you have more questions. You guys good? Okay, so limit comparison, you gotta say, okay, well, they're both positive. And now you compute the limit of AK divided by BK. So we say, okay, the limit as K approaches infinity of the square root, man, I think I need a new pencil. 
uh, the square root of k plus six over three k squared minus k times the other one flipped over. Okay, so that's ak divided by bk, but the way you divide fractions is you multiply by the reciprocal. Now, we could work out all of the algebra there, but the biggest thing on top and biggest thing on bottom is what's going to matter. And so we're going to say, okay, well, that's the same thing as the limit of the square root of k times 3k squared over 3k squared times the square root of k. Because if we multiplied all that out, that would be the part that matters. That limit is then 1. If you look at that handout where it shows the limit comparison test, the conditions are AK is greater than 0, BK is greater than 0, and then prove that the limit of AK divided by BK is some L, which is bigger than 0, so 1. And we need to say, OK, that's bigger than 0 then the two series do the same thing. So since that easier series up on the top right converged, then the original series converges too. So original series, the sum k e, or square root of k plus 6 over 3k squared minus k converges by the limit comparison test. All right, questions to there. Questions on either of these to those. I have a question. Sure, what's your question? So for like crowd mark and for exams, is that sufficient enough or do you want us to like multiply yeah. out the limit? No, okay. this is good, this is good. Now, obviously you have to be right about it, you know? So if you need to write out more to make sure you're doing the limit right, okay, but this is fine with me. All right, other questions? And you know the answer is that this converges. Okay. Everybody good? All right. I want to do some more examples, but I want to talk real quick about why the limit comparison works. So this intuitively makes sense, right? The direct comparison makes sense because, well, if it's bigger than infinity, then obviously it goes to infinity. Can you guys still hear me and everything? Okay. For some reason my computer just flashed off for a sec. Oh, my external monitor messed up. That's why. All right. So anyway, um, the the direct comparison makes sense graphically to think about. And the idea is that, okay, well, if it's bigger than infinity, it goes to infinity. Or if it's smaller than a finite number, it cannot go to infinity. And because that's the only way to diverge, then it converges. And so that makes sense. And we talked a good bit yesterday about why the direct comparison is true. We did not talk about why the limit comparison works. And so we just want to give a quick explanation as to why that is. So what happens is on the limit comparison, we're looking at the limit of AK divided by BK. So for limit comparison, you're looking at AK divided by BK approaches some number. So let's say this number was, instead of one, let's say it was two, okay? If that's the case, then what that means is that in the long run, when as you get toward k equals infinity, so when k is really, really large, then the original series divided by the easier series is two, meaning all of these terms are double all of these. Does that make sense in the long run? And so the idea is, well, then, okay, if this one, if this one converges, if these are all double that, then this one converges too, and logically to double this sum, but because the early terms might not be double, it's not really that. But the idea is, okay, well, it's not going to go to infinity because you're doubling a finite number. If the limit was three, then these are all three times that. If the limit's one, then in the long run, these are all basically the same as these. Because when you divide them, you get basically one. Not exactly, but the limit's one. Does that make sense? So if this converges, this converges. If this diverges and you get two, well, everything's positive. So this diverges because it goes to infinity. So if it diverges, you're going to infinity. Well, if you double them all, you're still going to infinity. If the limit's three, it's three times it. So you're still going to infinity. If the limit's one, it's the same. So you're still going to infinity. And so the reason limit comparison works is because then what you're saying is the large valued terms, the ones where K is approaching infinity, those terms are 
a constant multiple of these. They're one times these in most cases, or two times these, or three times these, or something like that. That's why we, we need to guarantee it's a number, and that's why it has to be positive. If this converged and this limit was zero, it would also converge. But if this limit was infinity and this converged, we wouldn't necessarily know. If this limit was infinity and this diverged, we would know it diverged. If this limit was zero and it diverged, we would not necessarily know. That's more detail than we need to go into. But basically, if you get a positive number, then this is going to converge. On almost all of our examples, we're going to get one because of the way we're picking these. And so then whatever this does, this does. Okay, so that's the reason why limit comparison works the way it does. Any questions about that? Okay, so I want to look at another couple of examples. Uh, so the next one I want to look at is the sum So if I have the sum three to the two K plus one plus four to the K plus seven over two to the three K minus two plus 10 to the K, then we quickly go through and say, okay, can we use the K term test? And we can't on this one. Uh, it's not one of the basic series. It's not a geometric and it's not a P series. And it does have all positive terms though. So everything here is positive, uh, does have all positive terms. And it's all the fun same function type. So the ones we've been doing are all power functions, but this one's all exponential functions. And so to start the problem, we're gonna compare it to an easier series. And we're gonna pick the biggest thing on top, biggest thing on bottom. Well, the biggest thing on top is three to the two K minus one. The biggest thing on bottom is 10 to the K. And keep in mind from before, remember this is really like nine to the K because it's three squared. So nine versus four to the K. So we pick the nine. This one's two to the third. So eight to the K versus 10 to the K. So we pick 10 to the K. Does everybody remember that from when we were doing sequences? Any questions? Okay, so then this one's weirder simplification, but we can write this pretty quickly as the sum uh, three to the negative one times nine to the K over 10 to the K, which then we could rewrite as one third times nine tenths to the K. Questions on that? Okay, this series converges. Because it's geometric. The absolute value of R is nine tenths, which is less than one. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so given that this converges, we can think that means that it increases but levels off. So then if we want to use the direct comparison, would we like the original to be bigger than the easy one? Or would we like the original to be smaller than the original one if we're going to use direct comparison? What do you guys think? Smaller. We want the original to be smaller, good, because then it can't go to infinity. Is the original smaller based on what we've got? Probably not because the top is bigger. You've got three to the 2K minus one, the same, but then you add on the top. That means the top is larger. Based on that, we would think this is a larger fraction the bottom is bigger, that would indicate a smaller fraction, but it's not clear. 
And so it would be a difficult proof. It may be that it ends up being smaller for large K, but it would be very difficult to know that for sure. So you want both the numerator and denominator to have the relationship you want in order to make that a clean proof. And so then we don't know that this is smaller than this. That means we're gonna to go to limit comparison test. So we're gonna come down to say, okay, well, that means we wanna say they're both positive. So three, K, three to the two K minus one plus four to the K plus seven over the bottom. We're gonna say that's greater than zero. We're also gonna say three to the two K minus one over 10 to the K is greater than zero. And now we're doing the limit of one of them divided by the other. Now you could do a lot of algebra here, but we're gonna take the largest thing over the largest thing. So if you distribute the biggest thing on top is whatever you get when you multiply three to the two K minus one times 10 to the K. The biggest thing on bottom is whatever you get when you multiply 10 to the K times three to the two K minus one. And that limit looks really hard. And if you look at my solutions, I probably go through some algebra here, but this is an easier way to do it. I'm, I'm probably showing some more work. I'm okay with you doing it this way, as long as you correctly pick out the largest terms. Why is this now, even though this looks kind of complicated, why is this easy? What's this limit? What do you guys think? Wouldn't it just be one? Yeah, it's just one because it all cancels out. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, it's significant that that is a number and that it's positive. So both series do the same thing. Well, the easy one converges. So the harder one, the original one converges. By limit comparison test. Any questions on that? Can you always use the limit comparison test? Really good question. So on this, so the question is, can you always just use limit comparison test? So if you don't like determining whether it's bigger or smaller, because that is clearly the trickiest thing. Does everybody see that? Like once you get into these, you're doing the same thing every time. Limit comparison test is not that hard. Can you always just use limit comparison? Most of the time, yes but not every time. When it's standard problems like this, where it's all power functions or all exponential functions, you could just default to limit comparison test. Does that make sense? So on all the ones we've done so far, yes. Are there a few that you cannot? Yes, and we'll look at an example of that in a few minutes. But for the most part, you could just jump to limit comparison test. So if you're confused by figuring out which one's bigger or smaller, most of the time you can get around it and just go to limit comparison test. The way that I've done them so far, if I've used the direct comparison, you could use limit comparison. But on the ones where I'm using limit comparison, you could not use direct comparison. Does that make sense? Everybody clear so far? That's a good question. Okay, other questions so far? Okay, so then what I wanna do is I'm gonna put several problems on the screen. And what I wanna know is just the answer. So first thing I wanna know is the answer, converge or diverge. And then what is the easier series? And then can you use the direct comparison test, the limit comparison test, or both? Okay, so I wanna know the answer before we write anything else. Does it converge? Does it diverge? It, what is the easier series you're gonna use? And then direct comparison test, limit comparison test, or actually some of these will be K term, in which case the easier series doesn't matter much, uh, but would you use the K term test? 
instead. And so like, for instance, this one, let's do two of them together and then I'll put up a bunch that you guys can do. And then I'll give you a couple minutes to try them. So if I have this one, So if I have these two, then, okay, the first one, you're gonna compare that to 3K over 6K squared, which simplifies to one over K after you take the coefficient out. So one over K diverges, which means this series diverges. The easier series is one half times one over K. You cannot use the direct comparison you must use the limit comparison. This diverges, we'd want this to be bigger and it's not. Does that make sense what I want us to do here? So diverges is the answer. The easier series is this. We cannot use the direct comparison, we can use the limit comparison. Here, if we were to do an easier series, it's 5K squared over 6K squared. Well, that's just 5, 6. In that case, it diverges by the K term test. And, and we'll go through one in a minute where we do the entire proof of that, but we wouldn't use an easier series, we would just use the K term test. Does that make sense to everybody? Any questions on that? Okay, so I'm gonna put a few up and I want you guys to figure out what uh, we should be using and I'll give you a couple minutes to try it. All right, so I'm going to give you guys two minutes to try these and then we'll talk about them at the end of two minutes. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start working these. Um, the first one, you would end up comparing this to 
one fourth. Whoops, let's do this in a different color. Uh, so you compare this to one fourth times the sum one over k, which means that it diverges. You would want the original to be bigger, so direct comparison test would work. Limit comparison test would also work. So you could pick which one you want. Does that make sense, everybody? Any questions? Okay, on number four, the easier series would be three times the sum one over k to the one half. That means it diverges. You would want the original to be bigger than this. It is bigger than this because the bottom is smaller. That means that we could use the direct comparison test or we could use the limit comparison test. On this one, we would compare this to four times the sum one over k to the one third. That would mean again, the original series diverges because it's a P series where P is less than one. We would want the original to be bigger. It is not because the bottom is bigger. So you would have to use the limit comparison test there. Any questions so far? Okay, on number six, you end up getting that the limit of the sequence is four over radical three. So this diverges by the K term test. So you would not need an easier series to compare it to. And then on this one, the last one, you would end up comparing it to three over two times the sum one over K to the third because the square root of eighth, I'm sorry, the square root of K to the eighth is k to the fourth. So if you have k over k to the fourth, it's one over k to the third. That converges. And then you would want the original to be smaller. Based on the top, it's smaller, but based on the bottom, it's bigger because the denominator is smaller. That means we would need to use limit comparison test here and not direct comparison test. All right, any questions on any of those? is good. Okay, I want to show the entire proof on problem two, just so we, I, we've already done one probably a couple days ago, or last week on K term test, but just so we know what the entire proof would look like. So what we would do is say the limit as K approaches infinity of 3K plus 5K squared over 6K squared minus 7 that limit at this point, I think we can look at that and determine it's five over six. If you want to take an intermediate step and get the biggest term on top, biggest term on bottom, that's fine. But because the limit of the sequence is not zero, this is the idea that you're adding five, six, plus five, six, plus five, six, plus five, six, plus five, six forever. That means the series diverges by the K term test or the test for divergence. All right, any questions so far? Everybody good? Okay, so then I wanna do one more example where we do the entire proof. Uh, one where you probably cannot use the direct, or I'm sorry, you probably cannot use the limit comparison test. So show whether the series converges, and we might do two of these for a good time, or diverges. All right, and so I lost track of what number we're on, but on these problems, I guess we were on number four. All right, so number four for this type of problem, where you actually show all the work, um, or show all the proof. So let's look at the series, the sum, k equals four to infinity, of uh, three, and no, uh, 13, we'll say plus five cosine k over uh, the square root of k. Okay, so what I said earlier to the question about can you just use limit comparison every time is that usually yes, 
And the, the answer is yes, when it's all the same function type. So all power functions over all power functions or all exponential functions over all exponential functions. Here you have a trig function thrown in, which kind of artificially makes this harder. Um, it, it's not a lot harder, but it means that the limits don't work out well. So like if you start doing a limit with cosine on the top and the bottom, like you would be doing when you're doing something like this, like if you have a cosine up here and a cosine up here or on the bottom, chances are the limit does not exist, which means limit comparison test would not apply. And so here, before we do anything, these two series are the series we should consider as relevant. And I want you to think how I would have gotten those. So we don't end up using both of those, but those are kind of the two possibilities. And somebody who thinks they know how I'm getting that, explain why those are. You know that cosine of k is either going to be negative one or one. So you just added five to 13 and subtracted five. Yeah, it's not going to be one or negative one, but it's going to be between those. And so you're right. I added five because plus five times positive one. And then I subtracted five because plus five times negative one. So 13 plus five is 18, 13 minus five is eight. And so then I'm, okay, I'm gonna think about these two series when I'm kind of thinking about how to start this. And it's important to hear that everything is positive. So even though cosine can become as low as negative one, 13 minus five is positive eight. So the top is positive, the bottom's positive. So this is still a series with all positive terms. It, and he's right, this is how I get to these. Now from here, what do both of these series do? Do these converge or do these diverge? Or can we not tell? The two in red, what do they do? Diverge. They diverge because they're both constant multiples of P series where P is one half. So these both diverge. That means what do I want the original to be? Do I, to use the direct comparison, would I want the original to be bigger or smaller than the easier one? Bigger. I want it to be bigger because I know that these diverge. So which one should I pick? Which one should I actually use? So this is bigger than which of these? A over square root of K. Yeah, it's bigger than eight over square root of K because the smallest it can be is 13 plus five times negative one. So we choose to compare this to the sum eight over the square root of K because we know that that diverges and we know this is bigger than this. Does that rationale make sense to everybody? Okay, so we're gonna prove what this one does. We pull the eight out and write it as one over k to the one half inside that diverges because it's a constant multiple because of the eight of a p series where p is one half and one half is less than one. So then we want the original to be bigger. We chose it so that it is. And you can write greater than or equal if you want. It turns out it is greater because for cosine to be one, you'd need like an, a multiple of pi and that's not gonna happen when you go from four to infinity. But either way, you can put greater than or equal. And then these are both positive, which has to be true for the direct comparison to work. And so then the original series diverges by direct comparison. And we're actually going to do two more examples. We'll go quick so we're not in here the whole amount of time because uh, I know we've been going a while. But, but I do want to do two more because I want to make sure we're really getting this. But any questions on this? You guys good? OK. So then if it's this and it's almost identical, 
we'll go through this one fast. If I have eight plus two cosine K over K to the fourth, then okay, the two kind of series we think about are six over K to the fourth and 10 over K to the fourth because cosines between one and negative one. So you think, okay, eight plus two and eight minus two. Now, what do both of these do? They converge. They both converge. So then would we want the original to be bigger or smaller than these? We want the original to be- Smaller. Smaller. So then which one should I pick? The original is actually smaller than which of those? Is it smaller than six or smaller than 10 over K to the fourth? Well, okay, six is smaller than this, but this is smaller than 10. So we want to pick 10 over K to the fourth because the original is smaller than the easier one. So now this is 10 times the sum, one over K to the fourth. This time it converges because it's a constant multiple of a P series. Where P is equal to four, which is bigger than one. We don't need this anymore. And so then we say, okay, then eight plus two cosine K, we want it to be smaller and it is, let's make this legible though. So eight plus two cosine K over the square root of K is less than 10 over, I'm sorry, not square root of K, K to the fourth, looking at the old problem over k to the fourth, and they're both bigger than zero. So the series, the original series converges by direct comparison. Does that make sense to everybody? Any questions? Okay, let's do one more where we go through something like that. What number are we on? Number six. All right, so number six. Uh, let's do seven plus four sine of. 3k over 2 over, and we'll do k plus 6. Okay. So now, same basic thought process, we're thinking either three over K plus six or 11 over K plus six. Both of those would have to then be in turn compared to three over K and 11 over K. We'll deal with that in a minute. But because of that, what do these both do? Do these converge or diverge or is it too hard to tell? Diverge. Yeah, these diverge and they diverge because they get compared to three over K or 11 over K, which are constant multiples of the harmonic series. So because these diverge, we want the original to be bigger than the easier one. That means we're gonna pick three because the original is bigger than three. It's, it's at, at least three because it's between three and 11. So we start and we kind of end up doing this in three parts. We compare to, so we're gonna, I'm gonna draw a big arrow and kind of go backward. So we're gonna to compare to, I'm sorry, no, I'm not. I wanna do this in the middle. Uh, 
All right, we're going to compare to 3 over k plus 6 first. The problem is that one's not a simple series. We, in turn, need to compare that to 3 over k. Now, this diverges, this diverges, and so does this. So we know the answer ahead of time, but we're going to prove it step by step. So we take the 3 out, and this is 1 over k. This one diverges because it's a constant multiple of the harmonic series or a P series where P is one. Now, this one, if I want to use the direct comparison for the middle one, this would need to be bigger than this. It's not. So I use the limit comparison test on the one in the middle. So I say, okay, they're both greater than zero. The limit of one divided by the other, so three over k plus six times k over three. That's the limit as k approaches infinity of three k over three k, that's one, which is bigger than zero. So this middle one, three over k plus six diverges. by limit comparison test. And now we've said diverges twice, but we haven't actually said what the original one does. This diverges refers to this 3 over k, the sum of 3 over k. This diverges refers to the sum of 3 over k plus 6. Now we prove the original one convert, or diverges because it's bigger than the one in the middle. So we say, OK, well, then 7 plus 4 sine of 3k over 2 over k plus 6 is bigger than 3 over k plus 6. Those are both bigger than 0. So the original series diverges by direct comparison. So we use p series or harmonic, that idea. We use limit comparison, and we use direct comparison all within the same proof. But if you use limit comparison on this, it's likely the limit would not have existed. So you can't collapse this down. If this had been direct comparison and this was direct comparison, you could just kind of collapse it into one and say, OK, this is bigger than this, which is bigger than this. That wasn't true here. But had it been minus 6, then that would have been true. OK. So that's a lot for today. I know we've still got some time if, if we want to ask any questions, but um, the series three handout, we're now done talking about that. It's not due until next week, but you need to be really comfortable with these before tomorrow's lecture makes sense. So if you're gonna um, attend tomorrow live, which I hope you will, if you're gonna attend tomorrow live, get as much of series three done as possible and make sure you really are getting it, especially like, you know, I do want you to understand the trig ones. That's less important for tomorrow. The basic ones, the ones we were doing at the beginning today and the ones where you're not necessarily showing all your work, this thought process, that really needs to make sense tomorrow uh, before we move on to what we're gonna do tomorrow. So, so like these first three and the majority of series three packet that stuff you need to be really, really comfortable with. If you're not going to watch live, just make sure you get comfortable with most of series three before uh, the video for tomorrow. So like I said, I hope you'll come live, but do try to practice. It's definitely not due. Um, okay, that's a good question. So one thing series three asks is converge absolutely or converge conditionally. Every series we have done today if it converges, you would say converges absolutely. We're going to talk about the definition of that tomorrow, uh, but these converge absolutely. They would not converge conditionally. So it, nothing would change about the proof. And you would just say, instead of converge, you would say converge absolutely. Thanks for asking that in chat. Does that make sense to you? That's something that can only, it only makes a difference when things are positive and negative. 
which these aren't. When they're positive, if it converges, it converges absolutely, which means you would just do the same thing we've been doing and just say converge absolutely. I'm glad you asked that because that, that is admittedly confusing on that worksheet if you haven't talked about that yet. But uh, please do try to do this before tomorrow or as much of it as you can. You don't have to do every single problem, but be comfortable with it because uh, tomorrow you're, it's going to kind of be assumed, okay, we know how to do this part and then we're going to expand on that tomorrow. Okay, that's it for today. If you guys have last minute questions, feel free to stick around. If not, I hope I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys.